hi guys, this video here is serious. I want you to sit down, grab a soft drink, a beer, a beverage, and watch this video. Okay guys, it's Archie Luxury, Paul Pluter on the Paul Pluter channel, Archie Luxury channel. Today guys, I want to talk about, I want to talk about, I want to compare, I want to compare two wristwatches, two wristwatches. I want to compare the Omega Speedmaster, man on the fucking moon. Man on the fucking moon. And what do I want to compare it to? What do I want to compare it to? Let's have a think. Let's have a think. What do I want to compare the Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon? What do I want to compare it to? I want to compare it to my latest buddy, the Tudor. I want to compare these two here. The Omega Speedmaster Man on the Fucking Moon versus the Tudor Black Bay Heritage. Bow! Kapow, fuckers! Kapow! Kapow, fuckers! Kapow! Kapow! No fucking white gloves here! Let's get the boxing gloves on! Let's get this settled in the ring! What is the greatest, the greatest watch? What do I recommend to newbies? Newbies out there. Newbies! What do I say to newbies? You gotta get yourself an Amiga Speedmaster man on a fucking moon! Moon! Get the House of Light Crystal, manual wind, non display back. The Omega Speedmaster Professional Man on the fucking moon. The game. I want to compare this to the Tudor Black Bay Heritage. What do I think? What do I think of these? Now, these pieces here, what do they retail for? In Australia, the Omega Speedmaster Man on the fucking moon retails for about sixes, low sixes, six and a half, RC. Ozzy, that's 5,000 bucks US approximately. The Tudor Black Bay Heritage, it retails for 4,410. That's about three and a half thousand. What do I think is the greatest entry level wristwatch? Well, I like both these watches here because it's the price point. The price point. They are within, you know, that's a reasonable watch. You get two, these two watches, <clears throat> they're both stainless steel. They are both on a bracelet. The br Okay, I admit you could get these on the leather strap version, but I always say get the bracelet if possible. These are affordable. Yes, it's still a luxury watch. Still a luxury watch. But these are affordable. Lower middle class people can buy one of these on a credit card. They can easy finance. They can get one of these pieces. Now guys, now guys, now guys, now guys. They have a few similarities. They are both, both luxury brands. We got Omega. We got Tudor. Both these pieces here are actually very, very retro. The Tudor, it's a 1950s, 1960s. It's based on the Rolex Submariner. Tudor's been out there for a long time. A year after Rolex, Tudor came out. Tudor is Rolex's sort of economy brother. <clears throat> so it's a watch with a lot of dive history. The Omega Speedmaster Man Under Fucking Moon. What it is, it's an iconic diver from the 50s. The case, it stayed true to form. It's, it's 
very, very luxe, one of the most iconic sports watches of all time. What's the difference between these two? Well, let's, let's punch it out in the ring. Now, the difference is the Omega is manual wind. So that means you have to wind the bastard up every fucking day. I quite like that, but purist newbies coming into the hobby could find that annoying. The Tudor, meanwhile, is automatic. It means just wearing this thing will charge up the power reserve. Both of these watches here have magnificent movements. The Omega uses the 1861 movement. This is a movement which harks back to the original 321. It's basically the, the Cam's, Cam's chronograph version of the 321 which is a legendary movement, which was used in paddocks and VCs, and, you know, it, it's that vintage -y type of feel. The Tudor uses a new Tudor in-house movement. This is perfected by Rolex, because that's who owns Tudor. What is the best entry-level diver? Well, let's get to that in a minute. The... Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon is a chronograph. The Tudor is a dive watch with a timing bezel. These pieces are both heritage type pieces. They are from the 50s, 60s genre of watch. What is the pricing is not ridiculous. You can get Omegas, they're being flooded on the grey market. Joma Shop, go and check it out, boys. And Tudor, maybe not as much, discounting as the Omega, but still being discounted. It's a great diver. <laughs> so, what do I think? Well, it's horses for courses. The other difference is the Tudor has a sapphire crystal, whereas the Omega has a plastic halcylite. There are certain features. The Tudor has a faux rivet bracelet. The Omega's got a more modern bracelet. Both of these pieces here are ideal buys. I really think, I really think, if you're going to buy your first watch, it depends if you're a purist or if you're just an inexpense, inexperienced newbie. But I really believe the Tudor is a game changer. It's automatic, which is a good plus because people don't understand that manual wind is great. They're kind of, they're just wankery newbies. The Tudor has a sapphire crystal. The Speedy has the Halcylite. Now, I normally say buy the Halcylite, buy the Halcylite. But for newbies, they like the, the sapphire because of longevity. It's, it's just a better thing for newbies. And then, of course, we get to the waterproofing. Well, the Omega is very good. It's a, it's a chronograph. The Tudor is a dive watch. A diver. It's a dive watch. 200 meters waterproof. Water resistant, fuckers. So that's these two compared. What is the better buy? What is the better watch? What one would I be going for there? Personally... I think the Tudor, and it's not because the Omega is inferior. No, 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 no. It's got a lot of going for it. The Tudor is for newbies. Newbies are irritating people who have just entered the hobby. See, Rolex is too expensive for them. Buy the Tudor. You get a Tudor. It looks like a Submariner diver. It's a vintage sub diver. In my opinion... This Tudor is the game changer. It is the greatest wristwatch for newbies because newbies don't understand about manual wine. They don't understand about Halcylite. They don't understand about waterproofing and chronographs. They want something they can get wet, dip their wicks, and wear the watch. <clears throat> In my opinion, the Tudor is the game changer. It's a game changer. 
compare the two. If you were buying a second watch, what would I say to Mr. Tudor? What do I say to you, Mr. Tudor? I would say, buy the Amiga Speedmaster. Man on a fucking moon! Two-piece combo deal. It's a two-piece combo deal. A bucket of chicken. Well, it's not a bucket of chicken. This is a two-piece, two-piece feed with chips and a Coke and a Pepsi. Chips and a Pepsi, fuckers. Uh, I reckon that is the ultimate two-piece feed meal deal. Combo deal. Compare the Tudor to the Amiga. I want to hear from you fuckers in the audience. What do you think? Which one is the greater of the two? These two watches here. Newbies, newbies, newbies. No white gloves here, guys. Get out there and punch this shit. Punch the shit out of the other one. I want to hear it. Keep it fair, boys. Keep it fair. These are game changers, fuckers. Archie Luxury, Paul Pluter on the... Archie Luxury and the Paul Pluter channel. Punch that fucker. Hi, guys. Archie Luxury. Archie Luxury channel. Paul Pluter channel. And my good friend, Tan Zillin. Tan Zillin. Answering super chats, it's not about the money. It's not about the money. I feel like I'm doing my passion. Tanzillin, simply the best. And uh, he's got another one for you here. How's this? Uh, it's uh, not about the money. It's not about the money. It's uh, my passion. Shaitling on time. Simply the best. Now, guys, I got to tell you, I struggle to survive full-time on YouTube. Please look in the description below for 10 ways you can keep me full-time on YouTube. Guys, I really need your help. Please consider getting a paid, paid video review. I'll do a review on any watch, any question you want. Guys, you can sponsor me on Patreon. You can sponsor me for as little as a dollar a month. A dollar a month. And that just keeps me going on full-time on YouTube. Guys, you could also, I do phone calls, phone calls. You can talk to me for an hour on the phone, Skype or WhatsApp, or 50 US dollars. Guys, I really do need your help to stay full time. Ben cannot survive on Google Ads alone. Please help me. Please help me stay full time on YouTube. And guys, don't forget that. It's not about the money. It's my passion. Shakling on time. Simply the best. Tanzillin, thank you. That's a sponsored bit from Tanzillin. I can do that for $150 a month if you email me directly. Look below for my email address, guys. Okay.